This is a podcast of 98FM's Dublin Talks. Remember, catch the show live Monday to Friday at 10 a.m. 98FM's Dublin Talks with Adrian Kennedy. 98FM. Now, uh, repeat sex offenders will be put behind bars for longer jail terms under new uh, legislation being uh, adopted by uh, ministers, I was reading. Um, Senator Maloney wrote this piece. Uh, The Cabinet decided yesterday to adopt what's been um, termed Debbie's Law, designed to keep rapists out of circulation in order to uh, protect uh, others. Debbie Cole's attacker was said to have acted out of character, but when released from prison went on to sexually assault uh, three other women. Uh, Debbie was on this programme last year talking about her uh, campaign and um, she's back on, basically, with a, a progress report. Debbie, it's great to talk to you again, and welcome to 98FM. Thanks, Adrian. Debbie, for people who aren't familiar with, uh, with your story, this all started back in the late 80s. Yeah, in 1989, when I was raped by the guy. Okay, now the guy's name is Robert Melia. Yeah. Um, and he was subsequently... After having raped you, he was sentenced in 1991 to six years in prison. Yeah, the judge was actually going to give him a sentence in double figures, but because um, between the two weeks that he'd pleaded guilty and the sentencing, he had tried to commit suicide in the prison. And the sergeant that was dealing with my case had come over to me and was sitting over a cup of coffee telling me how this was a lovely man, he was very respectable, he'd never do anything like this before, it was a mistake he made with drink on Mm -hmm. him, and um, could I kind of talk up for him, which I did. I, when I got to court, I told the judge that I forgave him, that I wanted him to have psychiatric help rather than a prison sentence, so the judge gave him six years instead of whatever he was going to give him in double figures. But the point being, uh, that's all well and good. That was his first offence, if you like. Um, Mm -hmm. And he was treated somewhat leniently. But the problem is, after he was released, he went and did it again. Yeah, he violently raped three women in a one-month period in 1997. And And again, he he was sentenced for that? Yeah. And then when he got how, out how long did that, he do? Sorry, how long did he do for that second sentence? Um, oh my goodness, I can't remember now. I think it might have been eight, but I can't be a hundred percent sure. Okay, and then when he was released again, he offended he yet again. Yeah. Now, as far as I know, he didn't rape the the last woman. He tried to rape her. He um, he he, thre- he, he threatened to bring her up the mountains. He, isn't that right? Yeah, and chop her up and kill her and the woman had to jump out a hotel window to get away from him. And it was after hearing that third story, I mean, this is a guy who um, the courts treated relatively leniently after his his rape of you, Mm -hmm. went on to uh, attack three women, sentenced again, gets released from prison again, um, and does it yet again. And it's for that reason this repeat offender uh, situation that made you say, ah, here, this is ridiculous. Yeah, because I just thought something has to change. Like in the last um, judgment, the judge referred to him as another Larry Murphy. And I just thought, why are we allowing people like this back out onto the streets to make it unsafe for men and women to walk the streets of Ireland? It's ridiculous. We have to do something. So I looked into different countries, different laws. I was kind of favouring the three strikes law like they have Which is what they would have in America, yeah, yeah. Yeah. On your third offence, you're in big trouble. That's it, you're in and you don't come out unless Paddy Massey's wheeling you out in the box. But um, when I spoke to, when I kindly joined up with Kevin Morn and we talked about it here in the house and his advisor was saying, look, I can't see that working, but I look into it. And then he came back with this proposal for the bill that we have now. Okay, well, um, why, for example, was the the three strikes law like they would have in America? Why is that not practical here? I don't understand the full legal terms, but it was to do with um, we say in a lot of this, like it's in twenty six states in America, and in most of them they don't use it because it doesn't really work. 
like you have different variants of it. Like I think it's California. Only one of the three has to be a serious crime. The other two can be petty larcenies or, you know, jaywalking, I suppose. Once there are three felons, you can lock them up for life. So there's a lot of leeway. There's a lot of... It just doesn't work very well. So mm. Okay, so tell me about the the new bill that lots of people are, are, are calling Debbie's Law. Tell me what that will be about. Well, basically what it will entail is that any person who is, you say, on their first offence sentenced to five or more years for a sexual assault on their second or subsequent um, trials, when they're found guilty, they will have to be given a mandatory of a minimum of 75% of the maximum sentence, which at the moment is life, which means that they will have to be given a minimum of 10 years. Okay, so on a a second offence, a minimum of 10 years. The judge can give more, but he can't give below the minimum. Okay, and then for a third and subsequent offence? It's the same. Okay, so that would mean uh, that it would be much more difficult and the courts would treat somebody like Robert Melia much more seriously in terms of uh, sentencing and would also have to take into account previous sentences for similar crimes. Yes. Okay, so uh, after, sorry, what did you say for the first offence it would have to be a minimum of? Five. Five. Of five years, okay. Yeah. Uh, Now, in his case, he did get, he got six years for the rape uh, he inflicted upon you, yes. uh, but it was the subsequent sentences that are, are, are the problem here. So he should yes. have done uh, another 10 years followed by another 10 years. Yeah. Which he didn't. Yeah, like in fairness, the way the law, the we say the prison terms run here, he was sentenced to eight years in January, I think it was 2015. So as far as I can estimate, he's due out in two years. Mm. I mean, that's ridiculous. It is. Okay, so uh, it, it, how close are we to having this um, in law here in Ireland? I can see the finish line. We're at, almost at the end stage now. The The Minister for Justice will present it to the doll within the next couple of weeks before the summer recess, hopefully. And we get a vote on it then from the doll chamber. And then once they approve it, then it goes before, as far as I know, then the next stage is then it goes before President Michael D. Higgins for him to sign it into law. I could be wrong there. There could be another stage in there somewhere, but I don't think there okay, is. Okay, but, but, you, but you do see it finally happening? Oh, it will be this year, yes. I assume, though, unfortunately, it probably won't be retrospective, will it? No. In other words, Amelia won't have his his sentence extended or... No, they couldn't do that. As far as I know, that would be unconstitutional. Mm. It will just come into effect from whoever sentenced, I suppose, from the day it's signed into law. Well, I have to say, I, I've, uh, I've the greatest respect for you for taking on this campaign on, on an issue that is so deeply personal uh, to you. Um, and even though... And, and a campaign that sadly will do nothing to punish the guy who raped you back in 1989 anymore but oh, well it will it, because he, like when he gets out in two years he'll only be I think it's 52 so he's still young enough to go and do this again so this will affect him hmm. but like it started out when I started this three years ago this journey three years ago it was for my benefit I was doing this so that I didn't have to see his face every couple of years in the paper but within a couple of weeks of starting the campaign and getting messages, this no longer was about me. This it's about, was about yes. so many men and women out there that I've got messages for who are telling me that I'm doing this for them. So it, it took on a life of its own. Well, Debbie, like I said, you have my full admiration for taking this Thank on and, and for bringing it to this. Uh, like you said, you can see uh, the, uh, the finish line. Um, Debbie, thanks very much indeed for talking to us on 98FM. Thank you, Adrian. Bye. That is uh, Debbie Cole, and it's great to see that that law will finally come into uh, effect for repeat offenders. This is 98 FM's Dublin Talk. The Voice of the City. 98 FM's Dublin Talks. With Adrian Kennedy. We're live every morning from 10 on 98 FM.